Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast for our final segment of today's show. We are going to be looking back at a significant injury that occurred in week one, but still has fantasy implications and fallout happening as we progress into week three. However, there is a kind of good news around this situation if you are a Green Bay Packers fan. Hint as to what this injury is that has surfaced concerning what happened with Jordan Love. So without further ado, let us jump right into this segment because I think it's an interesting one. We didn't have much time last week to dwell on this injury, so I want to give you a little bit of an update on it now that we are in week three. So, as we all know, suffered a leg injury Jordan Love did in week one. I want to kind of point out that it's through no fault of his own that field should not have been playing on. They had to do better Brazil in getting that field better, but it is what it is. But the big news concerning Jordan Love and his status is the fact that he could return week four, which is their first divisional game, ironically, against the Minnesota Vikings, who right now, sitting at 2-0, and sit atop the division. So if Jordan Love is able to return in week four, that is a huge game in terms of not just getting him back to full speed, but also to get back into division and also in terms of potentially seeding in the future if both of these teams potentially end up as wild card competitors. Now, the reason why I think a lot of people might have glossed over the Jordan Love injury is because it happened so early, and it's because the... the Packers kind of projected to have a lighter schedule than most. They didn't necessarily have to worry too much about any kind of major injuries early in the season. It kind of was kind of sucky to lose to the Eagles in Brazil, but it was kind of a weird game in that regard. They did get that win against the Colts, which is very big for them going forward, and they play the Titans, which leads me to the irony of Malik Willis being their backup quarterback, and the fantasy implications that he presents as well. So, the thing about Malik Willis was, like I said when we were mentioning him about the waiver wire, right? He was someone who stayed ahead of schedule in this game, didn't turn the ball over, most importantly, which is all you can ask of a backup quarterback. He has 12 for 14 passing, 122 passing yards, 12.88 fantasy points. If you are potentially looking at him for this game, I don't know. If you're in a deep league, you could be. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is if he has to play that game against the Vikings, what is this team going to look like fantasy-wise as well? Because if he plays with the Titans, I think that that game could be about the most even we'll see this week because he kind of knows the system. The Titans, yes, it's a new kind of coaching regime, but he kind of knows the system. And Matt LaFleur seems to have gotten the best out of him, seems to know what he's comfortable with, seems to have a game script for him, almost exactly set out to utilize the best of what he can be. And if it's, you know, just managing the game, being safe, playing safe football, then that's what it is. But it does leave questions surrounding the receiving core, which is always going to be a big question, especially about a loaded receiving core, much like the Green Bay Packers, where you don't necessarily have a wide receiver one that you can point to and say, I'm always going to start you in fantasy. Now, the thing about this week's game against the Titans is that there are a lot of ways that you can take advantage of the Titans through the year. I think that, you know, Josh Jacobs' owners will be pretty happy that he had over 150 yards in that game. But at the end of the day, let Malik Willis have freedom, at the very least. I think that you might be shocked if Malik Willis gets a little loose because he has a lot of good traits to be a good passing QB. He's not just someone who can just sit back there and manage game. He's someone who I believe can actually take over a game if need be. He just was not in the best of situations in Tennessee. They were really up in the air with their QB situation was he was there. So Malik Willis 
it potentially could be his last game, so who knows? If you want to take a swing on any of the Packers players on the offensive side of the ball, be my guest. Because this game could go many different ways for this Packers offense. Either it's going to be Josh Jacobs grounding out on the ground, or Malik Willis could be allowed to have freedom because it would potentially be his last game. But let's get ahead of the fact here. Let's look ahead to the future, the long-term future, and talk about when Love could return and what it could mean for this team. The best case scenario, of course, is that he returns in week four, much like people are starting to think, to play against the Vikings. Now, I don't necessarily think that the Vikings game will hold as much weight as people think. So if he does come back for that game, it could portend to be risky, but it's also kind of a little bit premature to think that you have to force him back because the schedule, like I said, was very advantageous. They got the Colts and the Titans. So if, say, you're 2-1 and one, heading into that game against the Vikings and you feel like Jordan Love could start that game but you don't want to risk it, then why just not play him? Because while you definitely want to get a divisional win on the board, I completely understand that. It's still early in the season. If you know Malik Willis wins that game against the Titans, you're 2-2 two and two at the worst if you lose that game to Minnesota. And Jordan Love could sit out longer, you know, get back to full health and be ready for the stretch run. So you have to pick your poison here, I think. So obviously, if you are a fantasy football manager and you have a number of Packers players on your team, the best thing you would want for them is for Jordan Love to be out because he gives them the best opportunity to get good fantasy stats. But the fact of the matter is, you can afford to, if you're the Packers, have Malik Willis out there and run more game manager games than, you know, risk potentially having Jordan Love not play to the best of his abilities coming back prematurely from injury. So the Packers have now become a long-term team, looking ahead to the long term of the season. Now, the reason why the hope and optimism surrounding the timeline can be positive for Jordan Love is because of the fact that there's a lot of questions about the Packers receiving room now. So, the question should be, is it going to be a positive effect for all these players? Should you know the Packers organization want to keep out Love for the stretch run? And the question also is, if Malik Willis is asked to do more in this offense, asked to play more in this offense, what's the best way for him to get comfortable to where when we kind of have to worry about winning games, he could potentially, you know, lead us to more victories. And so, the reason why I'm not, you know, completely out on the Packers receivers is that there could be many different ways that this plays out. There could be Malik Willis, you know, having to play a couple more games than expected. And Matt LaFleur eventually, you know, having to let loose, having to open up the playbook a bit more. Or you can bring back Love prematurely, and suddenly the stock that was there with the Packers wide receiver room skyrockets. But it's all kind of a crapshoot when you're this early in the season and you're already thinking about the, the long term for yourself as a team. But right now, if I'm the Green Bay Packers, I'm kind of waiting it out, so to speak. I'm kind of kind of projecting the chunks of the season where games will become more important and setting up for those. I don't think at this juncture you're concerned about one divisional game where you might have to start your backup. I think... You are looking ahead. 
at certain games where you feel whether it's Malik Willis or Jordan Love, you can either maintain your structure with Malik Willis that you've built up or go to Jordan Love and bring him back. So it's going to be interesting to see if, you know, the shortened timeline surrounding Love does plan out and he does protect to play week four, how the Packers handle it. Because while Malik Willis doesn't offer a lot of fantasy upside, in terms of what he brings to the Packers offense. He is still serviceable, and I think that Matt LaFleur knows what he has in him now. He knows at the very least he can win you games. Most importantly, he's someone who doesn't necessarily have much pressure on him because of how early this injury came. So it's going to be a very interesting situation, especially considering the fact that I don't think Jordan Love needs to rush into this or rush back for the Vikings game. But at the end of the day, it's all about fantasy implications, right? Because you know what the Packers can be without Jordan Love, and you know what they are with him. But let me know what you think in the comments, but that will just about do it for this show. Thank you all for tuning in. I've been Chris Shepard. This has been the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Continue to like, follow, and subscribe to the show and the network. Also, continue doing a fantastic job of leaving tips, donations, questions, comments, and concerns. The Super Chat, Super Thanks, and Super Stickers features on YouTube. You all have been fantastic today. Tune in tomorrow, same time as always, 3.30 p.m. Eastern, for another edition of the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Thank you all. Shepard out.